For this week, we're getting technical with the tech-heavy NASDAQ 100. Hello, everyone. Monty here, Market Analyst at IG, with another technical cheat sheet video where we take a look at key technical indicators, which usually help us formulate the overall technical overview. And we can ready those strategies, whether you're in the conformist or contrarian camp, as well as prepping levels on both daily and weekly timeframes with the ability to sort of adjust depending on when you're watching this video. It's also a matter of where traders stand prior, opposite sides, and the divergence is widening. In the case of retail traders, majority short and taking it up into heavy sell territory, while COT speculators slight buy, but kicking up a few notches. Also fundamental considerations. Just take a look at you know, what are the key market themes currently when it comes to tech in general. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and get started. NASDAQ 100 or US Tech 100 weekly time frame. I don't think there's much that needs to be said here. You take a look at the chart, you're like, my goodness, you know, it, it's not that often that we get, a, you know, when are we ever going to get a proper red week? Even when it occurs, it's usually something small, two, three consecutive weeks and bam, we're back up for, for further bullish moves. Price above all its main short and long-term moving averages. You've got a DMI, Definitely in positive territory. Nice margin for the plus DI over the negative DI. You got an ADX well in trending territory on the weekly time frame, and an RSI that's been falling in and out of overbought territory. Though those on the RSI camp, and this isn't a video on that. You know, saying, oh, you know, every time it goes back in, is that a chance for us to therefore go long? You know, after it's already been in overbought territory and price that's not too far off. At times, it was near and walking the upper end of the band but currently not too far off the upper end of it. Classifying this overview, you might look at this thinking, it's got to be something bullish, right? Either bull, bull trend or bull average in the case whenever you're working with channels, which requires you know, a lot of times to look at the chart to get a bit more support because a lot of them, when you have some of those pullbacks and if they're consecutive, looking at the technical boxes may not always provide that support. On the weekly, it's a bit more difficult to shift the technical boxes compared to the daily time frame, which I'll get to. But essentially, we are working with a the potential for a much larger and much uh, uh, much wider channel. And that just means that when it comes to conformance strategies, you, know, you got the buy breakout off the first resistance, which you want to watch out a little bit because if there isn't, if the levels have wind, widened a little bit, then even like last week, you know, buy breakouts did outperform off the, on the weekly time frame, but the follow through wasn't quite there. It didn't quite offer enough to get, for example, to the weekly second resistance. So, and then also when it comes to buying off the, the, the any dips, when it gets the first support, ideally doing it after a significant reversal. Um, what about when it comes to contrarians? Uh, you're looking at you know, those of you who think that the, these levels aren't going to hold or we're in for a pullback, therefore you're selling the first resistance off, uh, after a reversal as well as a sell breakout st strategy off the first support, which if there's follow through, if it isn't just one week, if it is say, you know, two weeks in a row, then you obviously can take it for a little bit further, even if you don't get much follow through within the same week. As always, when it comes to both of these, you do want to note both the channel as well as key chart levels in the uh, short and midterm. Now, th there are... There, there is a camp that comes out and goes, hold on a second. All right, fine. The overview, which represents where it is right now. It's, you take a chart and you go, okay, it's bullish. Does that mean it's always going to stay that way? No, this is not. A, it doesn't predict where things are going to go. You're sort of prepping yourself mentally of what to expect depending on where prices go. But there are those in the camp that go, okay, you know, I kind of expect things to hold at these levels. We'll talk a little bit about it when we get to fundamental uh, considerations. But they're kind of going, okay, I expect it to hold until we get to the next catalyst, whether, you know, earnings, for example, uh, but that means that what you're doing is, is that you're kind of working with a more consolidatory approach where you're working with reversals off the first resistance. That would be the conformist, whereas contrarians would be you're going for breakouts. If you're saying, you know what, I don't think, nah, I disagree with that. I think we, I don't, it may not be a bull average, but I do think we are going to shift away from these levels up or down. So that 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 is on the weekly time frame where I'm going to go in and take a look at levels. Uh, the RSP for this week, 18,326 gap to the first whether first resistance or first support of 324. And for the stop loss, SL, for the stop loss, whether it's the SL for the first uh, resistance or the first support, you're looking at 161 though, depends on your risk reward ratio, how much you're willing to, to go for a profit. And you can flip that by the way, if you're going for a buy breakout, just keep in mind, if you're not going for a lot of follow through, then you're gonna need to limit that stop loss for uh, on any pullback. And uh, there's also the matter of, for those who think that, okay, you know what? First resistance, you, you are expecting a breach of it by the end of the week, for example, but maybe then if there isn't going to be as much follow through initiating a little bit earlier than that. So that when it comes to the daily time frame, when it comes, to, excuse me, when it comes to the weekly time frame, let's zoom into the daily time frame where things have been much, much choppier. Now, price recovered. Yeah, last week we had the consecutive gains, so that was a plus, and that helped take price back above its main short-term moving averages, also above its main uh, long-term ones. It has been uh, for quite some time. You got a DMI that's in positive territory, and ADX though. By it depending on where, where you're putting the ranges. If you're looking at 25, then no, it's not in trending territory just yet. You can take a look over here at the chart. It was 
I plotted here down below, courtesy of uh, IG Trading Platform. It was uh, it did re you know it was above 30, and then after it started to drop once we got into choppier waters, and as a result, it is rising above 20 by this calculation. So if we're taking if we are taking 25, not quite there just yet. And RSI that has been beneath overbought territory for quite some time, though trying to get close to 70, and price not too far off the upper end of the band. So in this case, this reminds us a little bit of what we saw with the US 500 or S&P 500. And that's an overview that at times it's borrowing from its weekly neighbor. Because when we had those pullbacks in price, by the way, you know, at the start of uh, last week, where, where you know, before these, these uh, consecutive gains, uh, at the time, the overview was still bull average, but it was borrowing again from its weekly neighbor. And that meant that you're, you're not relying as much on the technical boxes at times because they can shift with great ease on the daily time frame, right? It's very easy to get it beneath, especially on the at-risk ones like the Bollinger Bands and the MA Short. Very, very easy. And you end up with a lot of false signals. If you take a look at the, on the DMI front, for example, you see that there were a lot of false signals, especially whenever the negative DI got uh, above the, the the positive DI. So a lot of people think, oh, it's time to go bearish. Not when you're in a, a bull channel, not when you got a bull trend. Usually those will represent false signals. Again, there, there may it may have its time eventually where it might finally provide that follow through, downside follow through for those who are, for those DMI traders out there. But for the time being, that has been the case. And when it comes, when you have a, you know, identical uh, overview, it means that the strategies as well are also going to be uh, identical for both conformance and contrarian. But let's not forget, we're working with much narrower daily levels, which I'll get in, get to in just a moment. And those who are going for a hold, you remember how I mentioned how there are those who think, no, I think it's going to hold here. I'm going to go for a sort of cautious consolidation instead. Uh, let's not forget, because we're working on narrower levels, that means instead of going via reversal like we would on a weekly time frame, maybe you want to do via significant reversal on both sides, if that makes sense. I'm going to go ahead and point out the levels. RSP, again, start of the week, 18,326. Plug and chug, depending on which day you're using. And don't forget, it's not going to be exact. That's what the, you have to get the uh, IG's daily market report to get the exact levels for that day on the daily time frame. But at the very least, it gets a, bit, a little bit closer. And don't forget to adjust for any anticipated volatility, because Monday is generally a bit calmer compared, to, especially when you look at what's on offer on Monday compared to if you're watching this on Tuesday, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, or even getting to Friday, which I'll get to later. So uh, RSP to first, you got a gap of, uh, you got a, a distance of 144, and the stop loss or SL to the first, again, as I mentioned, depends on your risk reward at 72. What about when it comes to sentiment? IG clients started, started last week, that's the inner circle, majority sell 58%, taking it up, we had consecutive gains, which means longs are going to get enticed and closing out, shorts are going to initiate, especially as we got to key resistance level, again, taking it up to heavy sell 68%. COD speculators, by the way, slide by 51% uh, with the in the previous report, most recent one, kicking it up to 54%, though, though, let's not forget, taking a look at the change in long and shorts, they reduced both long and short positions. It's just that a lot of shorts got out, more shorts got out before the FOMC announcement, because positioning is as of last Tuesday. So they, they, they generally timed this one right in the sense that the shorts got out going, this might be the last weakness before the FOMC. Some longs got out as well, thinking, no, maybe the Fed's going to come out more hawkish, whatever the case may be. But that's kind of what kicked it up to 54%. So this isn't a story of longs entering or, or, or initiating. It was actually one of them actually net getting out. Let's go ahead and plot it onto the chart. Um, as always, blue dotted line for IG clients, COT speculators, green dotted that 50-50 red line. Whenever you see the dotted line above, majority buy, whenever it's below, they are majority short. A story of generally majority sell bias when it comes to IG clients. We'll start with the blue dotted line. And by the way, you know, at times getting it right in the sense, you know, it dropped, you see that the, the, the bias go, the uh, sell bias drop, which means that the buy bias go up. And then afterwards it came up. And right over here, when it came down to this level over here on 14,200, you saw them, boom, go, go into majority buy territory and take it up not too far off uh, heavy buy before what happened, price then went up. They timed it right but got out very quickly. Longs have been getting out very quickly and, and generally going back, right back into majority short territory, though being far more cautious for the US Tech 100 compared to what we saw with the Dow, compared to what we saw, we're seeing with, for example, the DAX, or even the FTSE, if you want to add that one in, depending on when you're watching this video. And uh, another thing that's very much helped is, of course, the relatively range-bound movement that has given a chance for some of these shorts to get out. We've noticed that, you know, fresh shorts coming in, but they, they're looking to close out very quickly. They're not generally not looking for a big move down. They're just sort of, you know, they're getting stuck and like, okay, let me work my way out of it. And the moment it pulls back a little bit, the market like, okay, I'm getting out. And then afterwards, once it goes up again, all right, I'm reinitiating, which, which means that if there is going to be a, a sizable pullback, they're missing out on that. But if you are going to go short, and again, the overview has been bullish throughout this entire period of time, it's been bull average. Um, so, so obviously conformist buys have generally yeah, consistently won out against contrarians with the exception of say one or two weeks. Um, but if it is the top and you're thinking to yourself, oh, this might be it. Uh, 
the one worry is going to be that sales are going to close out very quickly. And that means that you could see this jump very quickly into majority buy territory, similar to what we saw over here. I mean, the majority short took a couple of weeks, boom, they're in, into majority buy and then kicking up into close to heavy buy territory. What about COT speculators? Now, for those of you who watch the technical cheat sheet for uh, US 500 or S&P 500, I mentioned about how it's a little bit different um, the way they're trading it when it comes to uh, these two indices compared to the Dow 30, where the correlation is much higher. And you can see it, by the way, in our, in our weekly, IG's weekly sentiment report, which we release every Monday. You get both uh, for, for all key indices as well as key products that are traded on our end. But story has been one of sticking close to the middle, but generally majority buy, so net beneficiaries. But as we got to these levels over here, you saw a big unwind and only recently take Taking it up, I, I, I showed in the previous slide on, on, the, on the week on week what happened. I'm going to go ahead and zoom into the daily time frame just because I want to take a look at not necessarily COT speculators, where generally cautious at these levels, but when it comes to IG clients, let's not forget that if this, the swings get wide, if they continue to range trade for a very long time, the market stays very range bound, it's going to entice a lot more range traders into it. And that means momentum guys are going to get, you know, they're going to get tested quite a bit. And that means that you might see larger moves for the blue dotted line, meaning a lot more people are now starting to try and trade these ranges, if that makes sense. So what about on the fundamental front? Now, remember, this technical cheat sheet video, I don't want to spend too much time on this, but looking consistently at these week-on-week -week investment flows, you look at, you know, reports out of Lipper, to a lesser extent, for example, Bank of America's flow show. And, you know, even on weeks where you had outflows for equities, it's been generally a story of money going into the tech sector in particular. So the outflows for equity on those weeks where you had outflows in general for equities, tech sector still had inflows. I'm not talking about every single week. You might be like, oh, I saw this one week where it was outflows. I'm talking generally. And that really points to the consistency of investors not wanting, you know, they wanted to get in early. They got in early on this move and then not wanting to let go. And then after afterwards, adding even more. Now, I know, of course, momentum guys are going to get in on and go, oh, wait a minute. You know, if, if investors are going to buy, let me go ahead and get in ahead of time and try and buy. But that has generally been the story so far. I'm talking for you know about a year looking at, at, at the uh, investor flows. And of course, a, a lot of people, when it comes to tech and general growth stocks, I should say, you know, take out the, the larger companies that, that aren't seen as sensitive to, to uh, bond yields, but you know, yields are much higher. December, you had the pivot party out of the, the December uh, Fed pivot party where you saw bond yields drop and bonds rally. Stocks went up. You had a risk on move. Markets at the time were pricing in about seven rate cuts for this year out of the U.S. Federal Reserve. And then, and then you had harder pricing data, and all of a sudden, market pricing had to readjust. And they said, "Okay, you know what? We're back to you know round three, it's roughly a coin toss. Market pricing courtesy of CME's Fed Watch, roughly a coin toss on whether there'd be a fourth by the end of this year, but roughly in line with what the Fed dot plot suggests." Now we saw yields on Treasury yields come back up. So all those. Those 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 uh, gains for the bond for bond values, and in other words, all the losses for bond yields coming back up, whereas when it came to the stock market, kept on climbing. So a lot of people kind of went, "Oh, hold on a second, you're defying all this sort of stuff." And of course, that means that the conversation is going to 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 come in, or that narrative is going to come in. Like, oh, you know, are 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 valuations frothy or optimistic versus are they in a bubble or is it the start of a mini bubble, so on and so forth. I do think that, of course, that one of the positives that I've been cited is that if you've got unprofitable growth stocks doing bad. That's actually seen as a bit of a positive in the sense that it's not a bubble in the sense that everyone's getting in on it. But I'm not here to, you know, that's not what, what we're here to do for this video, but it is something to note. And, and that means that no one's going to be a real surprised if, if there is a bit of a pullback. But at the same time, even if you're looking at a mini bubble, there's still room for it to grow and still room for it to move higher before the next catalyst kicks. And in terms of items this week, plenty of items, but real items are really going to be PC price index, which is going to be this Friday. So I do hope you guys enjoyed this video. Good luck out there. Thank <laughs> you.